Hello, my name is Adam Purchase in the ITC, and today we're going to take a look at the iClicker. We're going to show you a few steps on getting up and running in your class. So here's the iClicker base. This base will be everything that receives the click-ins from your iClicker. Now there's two types of iClickers that you have. You have an iClicker 1, it does not have an LCD screen, and then there's iClicker 2, which does have an LCD screen. The idea is you'll click on your clicker, it's going to go to the base, and it's going to register those clicks on your computer. So we're going to start with how you set this up and how you plug it in the computer, and then we'll take a look at the software that's available. So the first thing is you have your clicker base, and there's some plugins on the side here. You'll notice that there's a to the computer plugin for a USB cable. You can plug in a flash memory stick in here, and then there's also extra power if you're in a place that doesn't have um, enough power to power the unit. Uh, typically, most computers will have enough power to do that, so you will not be using this port. Uh, you can get any standard jump drive to plug into the device itself, right into the port. Uh, sometimes it runs a little slower if you plug it right directly into the port, so you can also plug your jump drive into the computer. Now, what your jump drive will hold is the iClicker software, and this is what you're going to need to collect the responses and remember what questions you asked in the course. So the basic setup goes this way. You'll take your USB cable, plug it into the computer area, and then you take your other side and you'll plug that right into your computer. Plug in there. And once you do that, it's going to go ahead and light up on the clicker base and let you know that it's up and running. And the next step is, I'm going to go ahead and plug in my jump drive, which we can run the iClicker software with. All right, so we've plugged in our clicker base and we have plugged in our jump drive. So now let's take a look at what we have in our iClicker folder. So here we go. Here's our iClicker folder. It's going to have a lot of information in here, a few folders, a few AXE files. The one thing that you're going to want to focus on is your iClicker.exe and your iGrader.exe. So I'm going to go ahead and just double click my iClicker exe and it's going to open up the Welcome to iClicker interface. So at this point there's no courses that have been set up. So to set up a new course you click on New and then you type in the name of the course. I'll go ahead and hit Create and it's going to put in your list. So each semester you're going to want to make sure that you add all the new courses to your iClicker and that way you can utilize and set up the settings for each of your courses. So I'll click on my iClicker 101 and I'll choose. That's going to bring me to my iClicker screen where I can start the session, I could resume an old session, I could loan out clickers, and adjust my settings. So this is the first time I'm in this course, I'm going to adjust some settings. If I click on the settings button, it's going to give me some basic information that I can input so that I can run my class through the rest of the semester with these settings. Now the first thing is if you have an instructor remote you can flip it over and take the number and enter it there that way you can use the remote to progress through your PowerPoint presentations and also participate in certain things within the class. The next area is your frequency code. Now if there's some overlap of frequencies because somebody else is using an eye clicker in the room next door, then you're going to want to make sure that you have a different frequency. Uh, by default they're all going to be set to AA, but you can do any combination of those four letters. Uh, so you can do like a BC or a BB to try to get a different frequency. At this point we're seeing that the AA is fine, there's not a lot of overlap. But if you are having an issue, you're going to want to change your frequency. The rest of these tabs I'm going to breeze through because they're not that important at this stage in the game. We're just looking how you can pull some poles in with your eye clicker. Uh, registration will automatically be set to Blackboard, seeing that we're using Blackboard at this point. We have some polling information. It's going to count our timer up as we pull. Um, basic details on how your polling timer or bar is going to look. Uh, and how you want to score is important. Now you have a participation points, which would let you know how many points you would get for just participating in the session. Then you have performance points, which would be per question. Do you want to give points for just merely responding? You could give one point for responding, for example, and an extra point for responding correctly. So that would equal two points if you got the question right, one question if you, or one point if you got the question wrong. For right now, I'm going to go ahead and give everyone zero points for responding, one point for correct answers, and zero points for participation. They basically just have to get the questions right. In your results area, it's going to show you how you can display results. You can take a look at that on your own time. The base display, how you will see the answers on your base. And finally, we have the demographic section. You can ask demographic questions at the beginning of semester and slice your data as the semester goes through so you know 
particular information by demographics. So that's going to complete my settings section of this tutorial. I'm going to hit set for course. Now we're ready to roll. Okay, so let's do a quick recap and start over. We've opened up our iClicker folder. We run our iClicker software. We choose the course that we already had. Now we're at this screen. We've already set up the settings. Now it's time to start the session. I'll go ahead and click on the session and it's going to search for other bases using the same frequency. Now we went ahead and set up another base on the same frequency so we could see what happens once we get uh, a frequency overlap. It's letting you know that there's another frequency that's uh, nearby and you can change your frequency. You can take you right to the settings if we sit, hit yes. Uh, since this is just a test, I'm going to hit no for now, but typically you'd hit yes, change your frequency, and restart your session. Okay, so I've started my session. The only thing that's going to indicate that we started your session is this little floating box here. You'll have the ability to start and stop your polls. You'll have the ability to turn on a results chart that's going to show you the results in real time. You do have this drop down that has a few bits of information that you can set up. You can get back to your My Settings screen, you can set up anonymous polls. If you didn't have a question written out in your PowerPoint presentation, you could even write up a question on the fly. Now we're not going to go through these two other areas here. For the most part, uh, those are if you have an iClicker 2. Everything from iClicker 1 and 2 will be able to be used on that multiple choice A through A E polling. Okay, so let's go ahead and get started. Let's say we have a question. Here's a PowerPoint presentation that I got. I'm going to put it on full screen, move this out of the way temporarily, and get this guy in the upper corner. Okay, so you'll bring up a question in your class. And when you're ready to start polling on that question, you'll be able to click on the green play button. Once you click on the green play button, you're going to notice that it's going to start timing up. And we had set that up in the settings. And there are currently zero responses on this question. So. Anybody that's in the class will turn on their clickers and they'll start the polling. There's one clicker in there. There's two clickers in there. Okay. So, I will show you the results chart in real time. I'm going to bring this on the stage here. You'll notice that in real time, people can adjust their answers. And it will show on the board. So you could show these uh, results to your students in real time, but if it's a question that you do not want to show, you want to make sure you click that off. Now to turn that on, it's just by pushing this button and it'll show your results. And you'll notice that answers can be changed as long as the poll is opened. So there we go. The answer to that question. And I'll go ahead and I'm going to stop the poll. Move this out of the way. And I'll progress on. The answer was true. New registrations are synced with the iClicker when you reload the roster. That's a big topic on here. You want to make sure that you reload your roster, and we'll get to that integration step in just a minute. But let's get back to what we just did. So by starting this poll, we're able to get the re results from everyone using clickers in the class. By clicking stop, it cuts off that poll. And no longer can people respond to that question. So that's going to really cover everything that you need to know for polling. It's going to be perpetually showing a question on your PowerPoint, hitting the play button, and then getting your poll results. Once you're done, you'll hit stop and progress on with your lecture and keep repeating that process. So it's the end of lecture. You're done. You've closed out your presentation. Now you still have your eye clicker on the screen. All you need to do is hit the little X to close that up. It's going to go back to this screen, and then you can close out of your iClicker and eject your jump drive, unplug your base, and go to your office or wherever you need to go for your next class. So I'm going to go ahead and pick it up. Now let's say we've gotten back into our office. We're ready to look at the results. You're going to open back up your jump drive. Now at this point, you don't need your base plugged in because we're just going to be running the iGrader. So here's the iGrader. Open that guy up, and your class is going to be listed in iGrader, and I will choose that class. So there we go. It's going to pull in my information uh, from this session. Now it's going to first tell me that my roster is not found. Do you want to download your Blackboard roster? That is something that we're going to do in a moment here, but let's take a look at the interface before we do that. So I'm going to hit no. 
It's going to give you a little pop-up of instructions of how to use your eye grader. For now, I'm going to deselect this so it don't, or I'm going to select this so we don't see this message again. Hit close out, and you're going to see that there were two clickers that were clicking in in the session. So that's the numbers of the clicker, but right now they're not tied to students. And that's because we haven't updated the roster and tried to tie these clickers to students. But before we get to that stage, we can click on the little unregistered students guy. It's going to show you the clickers that are not registered, and it will also show you unregistered students. Now since we haven't pulled in any roster, there's not going to be any unregistered students. It's really just going to be clickers at this point. But we'll get to how to get the students in there in just a moment. Alright, so there's a few more icons that can be utilized. For example, your export button allows you to select columns that you might want to export to Blackboard. Right now we only have one session, which is marked by the date, and I'm going to go ahead and cancel out of that for now. And new sessions will start stacking into your iGrader as you go along. Now the question is, how do I know what questions I just asked my students? Well, what you can do is you click on the column one time to highlight it blue and a second time to open your session summary. Now what you're going to notice is that you have a screenshot that you can bring up and it's going to show information about that session. So I have a two screen setup here, that's why you're seeing this kind of split view, but if you only had one screen it's going to take a snapshot on whatever is on the screen at that moment. So right here, here's our question. We can see that we were asking a question about true or false. So I'm going to go ahead and close that screenshot. And what I can do is I can click that A was the right response. It's true. And so what this does is it grades it. Uh, there was two votes that were in on that uh, question. And when I hit set and close, it's going to apply the points and everyone's going to get their points for answering in their polling session. So let's talk about integration. The next bit is to figure out what students have registered and not registered their, their student clickers. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to jump into Blackboard. Here's Blackboard. I'm going to go to my class that I'm teaching and running my polling session through. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to scroll down on the left and I'm going to go to Course Tools. In Course Tools, I'll be able to see my iClicker Instructor Tools. And when I do that, I have two links that I can utilize. Now, the first one is your instructor report. So if I click on my instructor report, I can take a look at some of the data if students have registered or not. So I'm going to go ahead and show all registered and unregistered students. When I hit submit, it's going to queue it up, and it's going to show me a list of everyone in my course. Now, you'll notice that there are two people that have registered their clickers, and the remainder of the course has not been registered. Okay, so here we are with the instructor tools, and you'll notice that there's an SSO security key. Now this is the way that you can sync and integrate with Blackboard. So as you are logged in as instructor, you're going to click on there to get your security key. You know, grab your key, I'm going to copy this one out, and I'm going to go back into my iClicker iGrader interface. Now I'm going to hit the sync button, and now it's going to let me know that I can sync with Blackboard. So I'm going to hit yes. Now at this point, I need to enter in some information, like my name. So I am using Instructor5's account, and then I'm going to paste in this security key. And in the future, I want it to automatically log me in when I get to this screen, so I'll keep that information in there. This is the one-time thing that you have to set up. Now when I hit log in, I will get to this integrate selection screen. So the Integrate Selection screen shows all the courses that I might be teaching for that semester. So I'm going to select my iClicker Integration Training, and I'm going to click on Import Roster. Alright, so it lets me know that the download is complete and I can restart my iGrader. Now that the iGrader has been restarted, you will notice that all the users have been pulled into my course. We have three users that are in red. That just indicates they have not registered their clickers. So two of these users could hypothetically be the users that are using these two clickers. And then there are two cl clickers that are two users that are black, and the black indicates that they are registered. By double-clicking the user, it shows the clicker that is reg registered to that student. So how do students register within Blackboard? Well, it's a pretty easy process, and let me show you how that gets done. All the student needs to do is, I'll go ahead and log out here, log into Blackboard,
Once you log into Blackboard, the student will go to actually any course within Blackboard will work. I'll just go to the specific course we're working in now. And as a student, the only thing you'll need to do is go to your BB Tools, scroll down until you see iClicker Remote Registration, click on the registration link, turn over your clicker, and enter the number of your clicker into the registration screen. Once you hit submit, the clicker will be registered to you as a student. It's going to show you the date that it was registered, and you can also remove that registration if necessary. That is all that you need to do to register your clicker. And as a student, you only have to register in one class, and it will work for the entire semester for all the classes that are using iClicker. All right, so when you're using your clickers to click in, you're going to notice a few things. iClicker 1 has the lights at the top, and on iClicker 2 has the LCD screen. Now, we're not in a session at this point, so I'm going to have you zoom in, and you can see what happens when I vote when there is no session polling started. If I click on this one, I'll get the red vote status. If I click on the iClicker 2, you're going to notice that there's a little circle with a slash through it indicating that the click was not received. Now the next step is, I'm going to go ahead and start a poll. Now that we're in a poll, if you vote on this system, you'll notice the vote status is green. And the same thing on your iClicker 2, when you vote, it'll have a little check mark to let you know that you voted correctly. Now depending on what classroom you might be using your clicker in, there may be different frequencies that you'll need to set your clickers to. So to change your frequency, you can hold the on-off button on your iClicker 1 until the button, the power button starts flashing. And once you do that, then you can type in the code for that room or the frequency. And you'll get a green vote status when you've done that correctly. Now with iClicker 2, it's the same deal. You'll be able to hold on the power button and it'll start blinking and allow you to put in your frequency code. So if you put in a frequency code that is not active, it's actually not going to let you change it to that. It's not going to let you change it to that, so you will have to change it to the frequency code used in that classroom. Once your frequency code is set, you'll see the check mark and your clicker will be ready to go. So I'm going to go ahead and log back out and jump back in as the instructor in the iGrader and we're going to do this one more time. So I had a new student enter my class and register. So like the question asked earlier, do you need to reload your roster to get new registration? And the answer is yes. So you'll do this frequently to make sure that all students have registered their clickers. Click the sync button. You'll hit the yes button. It'll automatically log in. You'll select the course that you want to resync your roster, and you're going to re-import that roster. And you will overwrite your prior roster file because you want to update your registrations. Once you update that file, you can restart your iGrader. And now that I've restarted my iGrader, my new user 5 that I just registered gets brought back into the Grade Center. You can see all his grades. Now that second clicker is gone. If I went ahead and looked at unregistered clickers, there's only one person that has not registered their clicker. If I look at unregistered students, it will show all the students that are unregistered. And so once your session is done, you can start folding up your clicker. Make sure to exit all of the program for the iClicker on your computer, and then you can unplug your base. Once you unplug your base, you can take your jump drive into your office and you can run the iGrader software directly from your jump drive without plugging in the base. So that concludes this tutorial for how to use your iClicker system in the classroom. Follow us on Twitter at Double Dropdown or check us out on YouTube at CSUP Technologist.